Hi guys, welcome to Stitchy Dee Doo Doll. It's me, Gail. Nika will not be joining us today. She's got a lot of homework to catch up on during the weekend, so hopefully you'll see her sometime soon. Or hear her sometime soon. <laughs> it's been a while since we've been here on YouTube, but I thank you so much for all of your support, kindness, and patience. Life does happen nonstop, and sometimes we have to roll with the punches. And Nico and I have gotten sick in the past two weeks. It may or may not have been COVID. We're not quite sure because the testing that we took was expired. But um, things happen, but the crochet never stops. So I've got uh, quite a few projects to share with you today. So I hope that you will stick around and keep on watching. My first finished object comes from this book. Crochet Iconic Women by Carla Mitrani, and I first introduced her in my last podcast episode, and I will have it linked up here if you are interested in watching. She was at first a whip, but now she is a finished object, and here she is. Queen Elizabeth II. Now, the last time I showed you, she was wrapped in saran wrap, and <laughs> you can go watch that video <laughs> to find out why. But um, I finally finished her hair wig and I attached it on by sewing. I attached her arms because they weren't um, sewn in just yet. I gave her a purse and I stitched it on to her uh, wrist here in the hopes that um, it wouldn't get lost over time. And I finished her hat and put on some flowers. And it is removable, which I love. Um, for this pattern, I did modify it by it slightly. I did do one less row for her hands because I thought that it was a little long for my liking. So I did do one less row. And um, for her hat, I, um, if you can tell, it looks nice right now, but at first, when I attached these flowers, and I will have pictures here on the screen somewhere. But um, at first, it was attached in such a way where it was messy. You could see these color um, yarns on the back side. And because I wanted to keep the hat removable, I needed to figure out a way to make it so that it was inconspicuous. And so I found a way. And I will have a picture of the before and after so you can see the difference. If you're interested in learning how I did that, um, let me know down below in the comment section and I can uh, show you or share with you how I did that. But yeah, I, I love the way that it came out. It's much, much better. And I think I'll start uh, incorporating that uh, technique um, for all of my future projects whenever I have... Um, detachable removable clothing i also gave her some blush for her cheeks which i love doing for um, many if not all of my dolls because i think it, it adds life to their face much like real makeup on women today and then carla's um pattern uh does the nose in such a way that it's more prominent um, but I wanted a more dainty nose for the queen, and so I uh, embroidered her nose with, I think, maybe three passes with the same yarn as I used for her, um, her skin tone. And I think that's about it that I have to say. She will be um, added to our personal collection because we do have family members who are from England, um, who are English, born and raised there. Um, so yeah, she will be a permanent part of our collection. For the queen, I used, I love this cotton in the colorways pink for her dress, ivory for her skin tone, dove for her hair, antique cream for the accent colors, amethyst, and some other type of purplish pinkish color that I believe is discontinued. Um, I couldn't say what the actual color is because I lost the, the ball band. I also use a 3.5 millimeter hook for her 
and nine millimeter safety eyes. And she stands tall at about eight inches high. My next finished object comes from this book, Crochet Ragdolls by Sasha. And this is her full name. Now, Sasha is coming out with a second book to this one, and it releases very soon in just a few days on April 1st of this year. So I'm super excited, and it's definitely going to be on my wish list. So here's my, um, my little puppy rag doll, and it's the smaller one. So she has like an adult, um, like a dog rag doll. And then a puppy rag doll. And this is about the size of a full adult. And in comparison, this is the size of the baby ones. So um, quite a difference in size. But the baby ones are so super cute. She's got like these feet that you tie in a knot. I thought that was so cute. Um, I think they all have that. And then they have roughly about the same size um, body. So here's my little puppy. I did uh, my usual eye detail and I gave her a bow. Now, this is my very first pattern that I've ever worked from the book. And this is my second pattern. And the first time that I worked from it, I noticed that. Um, I was starting to get a seam and things didn't quite seem balanced. Something was off, but I continued on with the pattern anyway. I didn't delve into it or look into it any further. I just went with it. And um, I'm not sure if you can see, but I have a running seam here and it's off center. It's not on the sides. It's I placed it in such a way that it's in the back. And right now on the screen, it doesn't look terrible. I mean, it doesn't look bad. I can see it more obviously in person, um, but it is there. Um, and then, so when I did work it up, I did notice that there's a kind of, kind of like a, a lump. It wasn't quite straight across to seam it closed. So there's a little bit of a lump here and a bit of a lump here. And I'm suspecting that it's because it, it was off center and because I have a seam and it, the seam didn't run on the sides. That's what I suspect. Now, this is my first time working a, a rag doll pattern from the book. But the second time, I started noticing the same thing. And then when I, um, what I, what I try to do is I try to draw out kind of like when you have visual charts and patterns. I'm a very visual person. And so if something looks awkward, I'll actually draw it out as if it were a chart pattern in a book or in any written pattern. And then I'll try and figure out, okay, what am I actually doing here? And when I did that, I noticed that the way that she has her pattern written it's actually, and I'm so sorry, Sasha, but um, I, as a maker, I like to share information that I discover um, to share with you folks as makers to hopefully benefit you and help you in your journey in making um, these amigurumis if you happen to work up the same pattern or work from the same book because you are going to encounter um, the same issue that I do. And I know that with the recent Amigurumi book tag, I did see some of you do have this book. And so I want to share this with you. But um, so with this pattern, you start off up here in the neck area and you work your way down and you end up seaming it. And it starts off with a chain. Now, without giving you too much information about the pattern, she does work in a chain and then um, you work around both sides of the chain. And when you do that technique, um, usually the increases and decreases happen on the 
ends of the chain. So you have a running chain, however many chains the pattern says. And then on the ends, you have your increases and decreases in order to shape your pieces. So in this particular case, she has increases so that you can have this shape. So you go from smaller to bigger. I hope that makes sense. And um, when I drew out the pattern according to how she has written it, um, the increases on one side were heavier than the increases on this side. So meaning to say there were more increases on this side and less on this side. And so when I discovered that, I modified the pattern in such a way that I distributed the increases evenly. So exactly the same amounts on both sides. And when I did that, I found that there is no seam on the flat panel in the front or back. The seam actually falls directly on the sides. I can't even tell um, which side, to be honest. I, I'm, I'm going to guess it's on this side, but I'm not even sure. It's, it's undetectable to, to my eye. And I like it much better. So if you're a beginner, you may not understand what I'm saying. Um, hopefully you do, but um, if you don't, it, it will come over time. And I can't exactly go much into detail over it because I don't want to compromise um, giving out the pattern to you. Um, but for I know many of you, like almost 90% of my viewers here on this channel are experienced amikurumi um, makers. And so I'm hoping that that um, insight and information will help you um, to even out your stitches. And it's not to say that you can't make it according to pattern and have it come out looking great because that's exactly what I did. I did not modify the pattern for this one and it still came out looking awesome. Um, the only difference is that you have a seam running in the back if you place it in the back. If you happen to place it in the front, then it's going to be on the front, but it will fall on one of the flat panels. And then um, you do have a little bit of a squampy um, bottom base. It doesn't quite fall flat. It'll be flat for a little bit and then drop um, like a dip. At least that was in my case. So, and, um, so if you are a, be a beginner and you follow it according to pattern, you can absolutely do that and still have an awesome finished project. So don't worry too much about my modification. Um, just do it according to pattern and you'll still work out um, a fabulous project. But I love the way that she came out and I love the tiny little detail that I added to her. Now, currently I only have it um, hot glued on here, but I'm hoping because it will be most likely given to a young um, child, I want to uh, secure it even further by sewing it on both ends of the, the bow so that it'll be uh, glued on and sewed on for extra security. And I'm hoping that that will be sufficient enough. And um, I, I tried giving her freckles, but the color that I chose, I didn't, I don't have many um, variation in my uh, embroidery floss collection. So this was the closest that I could find to um, her face. Maybe I could have gone with a pink, a brighter pink. Um, I think that's what I would do differently, but I'm too lazy to undo it and redo it. So I'm just going to keep it as, as is, but her freckles for now is um, less uh, obvious, but it is there. It's, it's subtle and I still love it. And I, I, I have these safety noses. It's not very often that I find a project where I can use it and be happy with the outcome. But I did use it here and I am happy with how it turned out. So I'm super happy with her. Super cute. And I do love the projects from this book. And I plan to eventually, hopefully, make them all. <laughs> so for this rag doll, I used Premier Basics in the colorway Nutmeg. Baby B Sweet Delight in the colorway Angel. And that's for the uh, white detail under her eyes. I used embroidery floss in the colors black and some kind of brown. 
for her facial details like her eyebrows, eyelashes, and freckles. I use 10 millimeter safety eyes and 15 millimeter safety nose. The pre-made bowl I bought from Daiso, which is a Japanese sort of dollar tree store. Everything is priced at, well, it used to be $1.50. I believe they increased their prices to, I think, maybe $1.75 each now and even up. So it's kind of like a five and below type of um, shop now. But yeah, I, that's where I bought this. But you can also find these pre-made bows in other um, local big box stores such as Joann's. And I'm not sure about Michael's. I haven't shopped there in a long time. And I'm not sure about Hobby Lobby, but um, definitely at Joann's. I think I used a 3.75 millimeter hook for her and she measures 8 inches tall. My next finished object comes from this book, Crochet Cuties by Jessica Zess. And this particular book, I've got to say, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen this on anybody's Amigurumi book tag videos, at least the ones that I've seen, and I've, I've watched quite a few, and I haven't seen anybody mention this one. So I'm, I, I'm glad that I have it, but what drew me to this book, and I did buy it on Amazon, what drew me to this book was uh, the design of the Amigurumi. They're very different, and the shape of the body is very different and unique. Um, a lot of the patterns that I see and I use are very similar in that they're more of an H shape of a body type and um, not very much shaping. You might have some slight shaping around the waist area, but she's got big hips. I mean, she is a shapely body. And that's pretty much what drew me into it. She's got um, thick thighs up here. And um, I, I'm not a big fan of her hand shape. So I did modify my, my particular doll not to have that. But other than that, I love everything about this. Um, I just love it. Uh, I tried doing this particular pattern. Although I did change up her clothing. So without further ado, let me show you what I made. Now I made the Dina or the Dinah doll. And this is her. Isn't she so <laughs> adorable? Now I have to pull her back so that you can see her in the full frame. She stands 19 inches tall. Now the last huge humongoloid doll <laughs> that I shared with you before. Uh, I forget how tall she was, but she was my fairy um, doll. And I think she might have been bigger than this one. But she's Dina or Dinah here is pretty up there. Now, see what I was talking about her shaping of her body? She is very shapely. And I love that. Uh, she's got, now Jessica Zess, the designer, um, has quite a few uh, clothing patterns in her book. And I'm so super ex excited. She's got jeans. And <clears throat> if you can tell, <laughs> these dungarees or whatever they're called, short alls, they're, they kind of sit low on her hip. I think that's the style that she has. But also her jeans sit kind of they're low waisted jeans <laughs> but I want to make those jeans and put her on my Dinah doll she's gonna look so fabulous so super cute but see what I mean she's got um so uh, let me try and take off her dungarees so see this is what I mean she's got big hips very shapely and then um, wide, thick thighs up here. And I don't know. I just, I love that shape. I, th I think because it's very different from what I'm used to and it's a nice change for me. Um, 
yeah, I, I'm really uh, attracted to this and I want to make more of them. I also love the animal face um, that Jessica uses. I thought that was a sweet um, detail. Now, let me put back her clothes on because she's getting cold and she's feeling kind of shy. Now for Dina here, I did modify the pattern, I would say um, slightly, <laughs> but significantly. Now she is written up in three parts, um, very unusually actually. So her head is separate, her leg and crotch portion is another piece. And then her midsection with her arms is another separate piece. So it's quite unique in construction. And uh, if you guys have been here a while, you folks know that I prefer to work my dolls in one piece whenever possible and whenever I happen to remember. Um, so I did work her up and modify the pattern significantly uh, in order to um, work her up in one piece from the bottom up. So I work from the, the toes all the way up, the arms into the body, and then finished off with the head. Now, in order to do that, it was quite a challenge. Um, and it's definitely for more advanced amigurumi makers. I wouldn't recommend it for beginners because um, uh, you, you have to have some, um, some level of understanding on the construction of amigurumi. So if you don't have that uh, baseline of um, experience and understanding on how the, the basic amigurumi is constructed, you may not be able to do it all up in one piece, but you will be able to do it after time and after gaining experience and um, working more patterns. But for many of you I know are experienced, you may be able to do this with the help of math. And if you're not afraid of math, then um, uh, you can definitely figure it out, um, especially if you don't mind math. You can easily do it because I know some of you already do this technique um, to work your dolls up in one piece. But uh, based off of the shape of her arms and the construction and uh, the way that she has it um, split into different parts is very unique and unusual. It was a little bit more of a challenge to work up in one piece as opposed to other patterns. That I normally do this technique on but it is doable and I am super happy with the outcome um, of what it came out to be and I will definitely uh, be using that technique again for all of my future um, Jessica Zest dolls. <sighs> I absolutely love this doll. Now for her hair I I did um, add more rows because I needed it to fit my particular doll and that's uh, actually what I find common whenever I do some of my dolls. Oftentimes I have to kind of tweak the hair wigs uh, to fit my dolls because of maybe I might be using a different yarn than uh, what the original pattern calls for and therefore I'm using a different hook size. And also the way that um, maybe I stuff or even my tension, all of those things come into factoring how I will um, make my hair wig cap. Wig cap. Sometimes they, um, they end up uh, perfectly according to pattern. It's more often that I have to modify the wig cap so that it fits my particular doll. And that usually means I have to make it shorter or longer by um, uh, reducing a row or adding rows. Um, I think only once I've had to modify it uh, significantly, but uh, other than that, um, it's just a matter of changing my hook size or adding or 
removing a row or two or three. As I mentioned before, I did not like uh, that little nub that Jessica has for the arms. So I just removed that and I just made it um, one long barrel. Just removed that part. Also for her hair buns, because the stitches are taller than single crochets, uh, it, it is more gappy. You can see through the stitches because of the nature of the stitch. And um, I learned from, oh my gosh, I forgot her name, but it's Old Soul Crochet. Um, the designer of Old Soul Crochet, she taught me from uh, one of her patterns that I bought to use uh, pantyhose uh, for stuffing because she tends to use um, the chunky yarns for her amigurumi. And so I used her technique of using a pantyhose to stuff this uh, hair buns. So I, I stuffed the, um, the stockings, you know, leg, leg stockings, how women used to wear stockings back in the day. I don't see too many women wearing it nowadays. Um, but they, they are out there. I bought mine from Dollar Tree, so you can check it out. Uh, but I stuffed the stockings and then I put it in there. That way the stuffing doesn't, um, it's not free for some little fingers to just pick. Uh, yeah, so that's what I used for her hair buns. For clothing, um, her short all is removable, but her top is not. This is actually part of her, um, her body construction and the, but her shoes are removable um, and I, I won't take them off now because it's going to take me a while to put it back on and then I added this cute pom-pom I found these at Hobby Lobby's most recent clearance sale they had a bunch of their pom-poms on sale uh, it just does have a pattern to make uh, the little pom-poms that go here but as many of you folks know, I do love incorporating different mediums into my amigurumi to add a bit of texture and interest. So I decided to go with a store-bought pom-pom instead, and I just simply glued it on with glue stick and a glue gun. Her hair bow, however, is not removable for some reason. I, I, um, I sewed it on or I glued it on remember I think it's sewn in I wish I had made it removable I mean I guess it's not too late if I didn't glue it on I don't think I glued it on I think it's sewn in it's not too late for me to just simply remove it and um, make it such that it is removable so I can just maybe tie it around here have a little strap and tie it in the back or something so that it is removable but I think I'm just gonna keep it on there um, it it's the same yarn that I used here for her dungarees. Um, so it is matching, but, uh, and I do plan on giving her or making more clothing for her. So I don't know, we'll see how I feel. But for now, it's, it's gonna be permanently stuck on there. <laughs> now, as I mentioned before, uh, her construction of her doll is very unique and unusual. And I will have a, a drawing of my own to show you what I mean. Um, her different sections of her body is quite unique. And um, you can definitely do it up according to pattern and just seam them up uh, together. There's, there's going to be a lot of sewing, but it is doable. And your doll will still come out fabulous. It's just that I have a personal preference of working my dolls up into one piece as much as possible because I don't particularly care or enjoy uh, the sewing process. But this is my Dinah doll and I'm super happy with how she came out. I gave her some blush on her cheeks and some eyelashes. I am so in love. Um, I, I would highly recommend this book if you love dolls and if you don't mind a challenge or working up 
patterns that are a little bit different or unusual. I wouldn't suggest it for absolute beginners, but maybe an intermediate or uh, an extremely advanced beginner. For Dinah, I used I Love This Cotton in the colorway Ivory for her skin tone, Mint for her top, Soft and Sleek Chunky in the colorway Dark Gray for her hair, Lion Grand Basic Stitch in the colorway Baby Pink for her facial details like her nose and her mouth, Yarn Bee Sugar Wheel Cotton Mini in the colorway Cutie Patootie, which is a discontinued line of yarn from Hobby Lobby for her, her uh, removable short all. Oh, and then the mint is also used for her shoes, which are removable. I use some embroidery floss for her eyelashes in the color black. And then I used a 3.5 millimeter, 4.25, and a 5 millimeter hook for all the different parts of her, um, her body. So 3.5 was for her entire body. I believe I used a 5 millimeter for her hair because this is a chunky uh, yarn. And then for her clothing, I used the... 4.25 millimeter hook. I love using a three weight yarn and a larger size hook for clothing because it tends to make the clothing softer and more flowy and less rigid. And so that's what I like to do with clothing, typically speaking. So this is Dina and I am so in love with her. My next finished object comes from this book, Once Upon a Time in Crochet by Lynn Rowe. The project that I chose is quite, <laughs> quite the project, and it did take me a very long time to make. I think maybe about a week to make, and she now lives in this ginormous <laughs> box here, um, which I did get either from Hobby Lobby or um, Joann's, um, but she lives in here, and it's the princess and the pea. Here's the princess, and you find her pea. This is her pea. Um, I was debating whether to uh, sew it into her hands or not, um, but it goes underneath a mattress, so I figured I'd just leave it loose, but I'm hoping that uh, it doesn't get lost. Maybe I should make two for the whole set. But I, for this particular set, I either plan on keeping it or donating it to my local charity. We'll see. Um, but here's the princess. And she has a granny square pillow. <laughs> Isn't it so cute? Now, in the inside, there is fabric so um, to, to keep the uh, not stuffing. I used uh, quilt batting in the middle just to keep it from you know poking through and little fingers from picking at it. So here's her pillow. She's got quite a few sheets for her mattress, and they come in all different kinds of colors because that's the color scheme that I chose. And then um, this is her blanket that she actually puts over top of her body. This goes underneath. This represents basically the, the different mattresses, but I wasn't about to make, and the pattern doesn't wasn't about to <laughs> have you make you know umpteenth mattresses so this these sheets are to represent the the different levels of mattresses but this is her blanket that she sleeps with and then this is like a 
I guess like a mattress pad and this was sewn and again I use the same uh, quilt batting for this now if I wanted to take it a little further I could make little tufts by using um, some embroidery floss or something and giving them little tufts and just tie it in like those tied quilts and then here's her mattress and again I stuffed it with um, whatchamacallit the quilt uh, batting same same ones that I use for everything else now this is her mattress and where's where's her pee here's her pee and it goes underneath here right and then here are her mattresses or yeah mattresses and then here's her pillow Let's put her pillow on the side and here's our little princess she goes like this and her blankets and she's so cute <laughs> So all of this um, will go in here and I fold it in such a way where she actually fits. And um, I have the book on order from Amazon and um, I'm going to put it in the box as a complete collection. So uh, yeah, it's either for keeps or uh, for donation because I think that um, the my donation of choice could um, use something like this uh, if i do donate it i'm hoping that um, maybe they can keep it in their center and use it there for other children for all children to use as opposed to gifting it to just one family to use um, but yeah i think that would be a great uh, donation so lynn rowe the designer of this pattern um, does mention to put in uh, your eyes but she doesn't mention it until you get further along into uh, finishing up the head and then by then I feel like um, the hole is too small for you to insert the eyes so just be aware that if you do work up this pattern um, to be mindful of inserting the safety eyes before you get further along uh, into the pattern because she does make mention of it but I think um, it would have been beneficial to mention it earlier in the pattern um, where the hole is much bigger so you can fit it in there. Um, so I thought I'd make mention of that. Also, uh, as a tip, when working out this pattern, um, her instructions for her hair is quite lengthy, but it's written in such a way where it's only like, say, normal patterns they're broken up into you know rounds so you have round one and it's like a paragraph looking thing round two and a separate paragraph round three and a separate paragraph well the whole hair is written in let's just call it for lack of vocabulary one paragraph and so because all of this is constructed in one lump sum it's kind of hard to follow so my suggestion to you is to either have it um, digital where you can take a picture of it and um, blow it up and follow it that way and move along the screen that way. Or if you use um, an online uh, pattern application like I do, I forget what mine is called, but I'll have it on the screen here. Um, and then you can have within the application uh, markers like a vertical and a horizontal marker to help keep your place within the pattern or maybe you can photocopy it and then mark your pattern that way so that you can follow along and not have to mark up your actual pattern within the book um, or you can use a post-it note to help you um, follow along in the pattern and just go row by row or a stitch by stitch um, in order to follow along with her pattern because especially for her hair wig um, because it's written up in just one concentrated area um, that is easy to get lost so that would be my uh, suggestion to you or a tip for you i i did um 
I did glue down her hair. I wasn't about to spend some time uh, sewing it down and I found it much easier and quicker and beneficial to me as a maker to glue her hair down and I think it's just fine the way that it is. I am very happy with the way that she came out. She did take quite a long time to make. Like I said, um, I'm guesstimating about a week to make. So if I were to sell her, it would be right up there because it it would be with a box and the book and everything that it came with and I think the reason why that it took me so long is because um, I, I feel like working in rows takes a longer time and with everything that's crocheted like uh, a blanket if you were to stitch it all together it's basically a big blanket and then there's sewing involved and then there's two panels here and then there's two panels here along with the sides that you have to deal with and four sheets that you have to crochet and then this one blanket here. It was just a lot, a lot to do. Um, so yeah, uh, about a week, I would say, is how long it took me to make the whole set. And um, it was definitely a labor of love. So for the princess and her pea, I used... I love this cotton in the colorway Antique Cream for her skin tone, Soft and Sleek in the colorway Hot Pink for her clothes, and Green Apple for the bedding, Premier Basics in the colorway Chocolate for her hair, Lion Brand Basic Stitch in the color Ecru for her bedding, and Premier Everyday Worsted in the colorways Baby Pink and Orchid for her clothing as well as some of her bedding. I used 9mm safety eyes and a 3.5mm hook for her body and she stands tall at about 13 inches high including her crown. I embroidered her nose but I forgot her cheeks. <laughs> I'm going to have to give her some blush to add some life to her cheeks like I love to do with all of my dolls. But that's usually the last step that I do for my dolls. If you are enjoying our video so far, please hit that like button and consider hitting that subscribe button if you are not already subscribed so you don't miss any future videos. And if you have any crochet friends that you think might be interested in our videos, please feel free to share our video. Now on to our next project. My next finished object I found on Instagram and she is one of my absolute favorite uh, amigurumi designers. I just love her style and her unique take on amigurumi. And uh, every now and then uh, on her Instagram account, you can find free patterns and they're usually miniature and I chose this one and it's a little mini bear uh, it kind of looks like it's in a costume but this is not removable this is actually sewn in and I don't normally work with this tiny of uh, yarn but I, I think it's I think it's categorized as a three weight yarn but I feel like it's more like a two or a one <laughs> Not that I'm used to working with those types of yarns, but I just feel like it's so super tiny that it's ridiculous to work with. But I know that people work with even tinier things like thread. <laughs> and if you do work with thread, kudos to you because this is about as tiny as I will ever get to working with, I think. Uh, if I were to use anything smaller, I think I would double it up and make it a thicker uh, yarn. But I absolutely, absolutely love this pattern. Look at how stinking cute it is. It was quite a challenge for me because I'm not used to working with uh, such a tiny uh, crochet hook and such tiny, skinny, dainty yarns. Now, I use Kartofu Organica, which I got from Hobium, and it just, it turned out this size. This tiny bear measures approximately 4 inches, and I use a 2.25 millimeter hook for it. 
and it came out so super cute and I gave him some blush and some freckles and then I embroidered the the nose, the freckles, and the eye details. I worked it out exactly according to pattern. Now there's one tip that I have for you which I fail to do. I normally do it but for some reason I, I don't know, maybe because of the way that I had it placed on here. But when you do put on this cap here, make sure that you stretch it out, like really stretch it out before you adhere it onto the head. Um, I sewed mine on, I didn't glue it on. Um, so I have a little bit of a give. I, um, I prefer it to have it super tight where it's fitted onto the head, but I, had, I do have a little bit of a slack. So it feels like there's a bubble in there, but um, yeah, it still came out super cute. It's just a, a little minor detail that I am aware of as the maker. Um, but yeah, that would be my tip for you is before you attach this to make sure that you uh, pull on it and take out all the air. I usually start from the center part and I will rub my fingers um, in the outward section just to get out all the air bubbles and make sure that it's uh, flush with the head before I attach it on. But uh, yeah, I super love the way that it came out. And then if I were to modify this for the future, I might want to try um, making the legs into the body as one piece. Uh, she does have some patterns that way, but this particular one is not um, designed that way. And I think it's because she does uh, this color different. So her legs and the arms are different color from the body. Whereas her other ones where the legs are the same or worked into the body, uh, they are the same color. Um, so maybe that's why she has it that way. But I do like the construction. It's easier when it's worked into one piece. So maybe if I can figure out a way to make it look, still look the same with the color changes um, and still have it worked into one piece, maybe. Um, just for construction reason, I find it easier for me. And then because this, this is actually closed, it's not like it's open, it's actually closed and it kind of looks like a teardrop and then you attach it on. So that was a little bit of a challenge for me in particular, just because I don't enjoy the sewing process and then um, to have to attach it was a little different because I am attaching it on the side of the teardrop, if that makes sense when you look at it. It's not like um, you're attaching it from the top of uh, the leg. It's actually uh, the side of the leg. So much more larger of a uh, surface area that I'm attaching the leg onto the body. But I... I'm so in love with her patterns. I want to collect them all like they're Pokemon and I want to make them all eventually, hopefully within my lifetime. <laughs> but I am such a big fan of hers. Uh, I love everything that she puts out and they're just so darling. <sighs> so for this bear, I used Kartoku Organica in the colorway Cream for the skin color. Cerulean and K1533 and K1211 for her clothing and also for her facial details as you can see in the freckles and the nose. I also, as I mentioned, I use a 2.25 millimeter hook. And some embroidered floss in the black colorway for her eye details. Now for my whip, and my first whip comes from this book, Magical Amigurumi Toys by Marie Lise Leo, otherwise known as Lily Lise. And um, I chose to do this bear, Tummy Teddy, I believe his name is. I've made him before in the past, so this is my second time around making him. And this is how my tummy teddy is looking so far. 
um, I decided to make this pattern basically from the yarn. So I went shopping at Hobby Lobby and I came across this one skein of yarn that just intrigued me so much. I wanted to use that yarn skein and it, it just, in the skein, it looked interesting. But now as you see, as it worked up, you can see why. Um, I was just so intrigued by it. I was like, I need to find a pattern that's basically simple, no clothing. I could just work it up and then you can see the yarn itself showcase um, in the pattern. And I think I found the perfect pattern for it. And this is how the skein worked up. It's a Hobby Lobby yarn, but I did use um, a different skein for the accent pieces like the um, toe beans, and also the foot pads. But um, as you can tell in the pattern, uh, she will have a muzzle that's made out of fabric. And I think I'm gonna be using this pattern uh, fabric. It's a light pink, it's not really showing very well. It's a light pink, maybe here, with white polka dots for her muzzle. And then for her nose, I want to do this color. Now, I'm not quite sure how that's going to turn out in the end. But um, once I cut the pieces out and I, uh, I audition it on her face, then I will be able to tell um, just by looking at it if I will be happy with the pattern fabric that I chose and the color felt that I chose for her. But for now, that's the plan. So I am loving the way that this yarn works up. It is so interesting. Look at all the different uh, colors and patterns and just the way that it works up. I mean, if I work it all up in one piece, uh, you will have you will see all the striping. But because I have it in different portions of the body, um, the, the stripes are broken up into different sections, but just the fact that this came out into one skein is just astonishing to me. It's so amazing. Now, I did use a different skein for the head because um, the one skein ran out. So the one skein that I used for inspiration was basically the body, the arms, the legs, the ears, and the tail. And then I did run out, um, so I did have to use some of this basic white in the ears and the head. So if you notice, I have a little bit of a white striping at the base of the ear. But other than that, I used the whole skein of yarn for the entire body, minus the head, the base of the ears, and then these pink details. But I super love the way that uh, it is turning out and stick around to find out how she finishes up. And I will have all of the yarn and hook size and safety eye details listed in that video when it does come out. As I mentioned before, I did make this pattern once before. And um, when I did the fabric for the muzzle, I just basically cut out the fabric and then I stitched it on there with, I believe, some either some thread or some embroidery floss and left the edging of the fabric raw. Now, over time, you will be able to see if I still had it. Unfortunately, I do not. Um, but over time, you will see, because it's a cotton fabric, you will see the edges start to fray. Now, if you like that look and it doesn't bother you, then, you know, you can do it according to pattern. But I would like to try and see how it would work up if I were to reinforce it with either some uh, fusible interfacing or uh, turn it under like applique style. Um, so I would like to try something different just to see how it will come out and then figure out which uh, technique I like better for my dolls when working up this pattern.
So that is something that I will try uh, differently this time around. My next whip comes from this book, My Crochet Doll by Isabel Kesejian. And I've been seeing this book in many of your uh, Amigurumi book tags, but I don't hear too many people uh, talk about the pattern itself. And I did find uh, a few errors in here, and I will talk about it in the, um, the next video where I show her as a finished object. But for now, I will show you her as a whip. Now, this is what I have so far. I don't even have her arms. It's, this is just her clothing on her. So I have her body. Her head's not even closed up. But uh, I have her body, no arms yet, and I am working on her um, her clothing. Actually, no, I think I, I do have her arms. I'm sorry, I lied. So I have her arms. I just haven't um, put it on there yet. So I, I need to figure out how long to make her sleeve. Or actually, I must have because I pulled this one off. So that's how um, long I'm making my sleeve. Uh, sometimes I go according to pattern and sometimes I just uh, make it however short or long that I want. But this is how her clothing is looking so far. And I do have her arms. I just haven't stuffed them or attached them just yet. And then I also have this part of her cape. So it goes behind like this. I still need to work her hood. And what else? Um... So I still have her hood and her hair to work on and then also her her shoes and her um, her bag. Now I love that her bag has this little bit of detail here so I think I'm going to be doing that as well. I'm going to be using some kind of uh, faux leather or suede for the, the straps of her purse because I love that. Um, but yeah, this is how my uh, Little Red Riding Hood <laughs> is turning out to be and I cannot wait to finish her up. Now the errors that I um, stumbled upon are uh, they will be major in a sense uh, for beginners because um, if you are a beginner you may not understand why your uh, stitches aren't coming out or your your doll isn't coming out but as um, for you experienced uh, crocheters, you may be able to, or you will be able to spot it uh, when you see it because your stitches won't come out um, according to the, the uh, number at the end of the row. But a simple fix for you experienced um, crocheters out there, but just be aware that there, there are... Um, some slight errors in the pattern, but you will be able to uh, figure it out once you work work into it. Easy to fix. My next pattern I found on Etsy, and the designer is Liliana of Little by Little LB on Etsy. And I made this pattern before, once before, and it's gone to my niece, and it's super darling. I love, love, love working up this pattern. And it is the uh, Ines doll. And this is how she's looking so far. Um, I did attach her hair. I didn't finish her up because um, I've got these yarn ends to weave in. And then she's got a hair bow um, that's supposed to go on her hair. And this is her clothing so far. I still need to attach some button closures in the back. Um, but this is her uh, her summer dress, and this is how she looks. And I haven't finished her shoes, but she's got um, two wardrobes in the pattern. She's got a summer dress and shoes, and then she's got a winter dress and shoes. Sneakers, actually. Super, super cute. And I love that the clothes are removable. Now, this is how she looks, and I am super in love with the hair color that I chose. I love, love, love using this color for my doll's hairs. And I'm not sure if the color is coming up clear on camera, but it is a deep, whiny red color. This is 
uh, Hobby Lobby's I Love This Cotton Aubergine color. And unfortunately, it is a discontinued yarn. And I haven't been able to get my hands on it um, prior to the clearance because I know that um, I've been seeing it on a lot of the clearance yarn videos that I've been watching. And um, I'm very sad. This is pretty much my last ball that I have uh, of this yarn. So this is my last doll that's going to have this red hair. But this type of deep, whiny red color, I love using for my doll hairs. I don't know what it is, but I am so super attracted to this type of hair color. Um, but this is her summer look. I'm still not done with her shoes again. Um, I do have her winter, her winter dress. And this is how it looks. So it's a long sleeve with a little bit of uh, border detail. And then I believe with this outfit, it comes with sneakers. Or is it the other way? No, no. I think this one comes with sneakers. So that'll be super cute. And then she does have a teddy bear. Now, I I went rogue. I Whenever I make my amigurumi, I'm, I don't even pay attention to the designer's uh, yarn choices. I'm just like, I'm going to use this yarn and I'm going to use this hook because that's what I feel like. So I started making the teddy bear for her, but I feel like her teddy bear is too big for her body. So I wanted something smaller. So I ended up changing over to a smaller hook and smaller yarn size. And I think I like this size better. So this is how it's looking. This is my Inez doll. Isn't she, she so cute? Now, when I gave my uh, niece um, this doll, uh, my brother was like, oh, wow, she can uh, change out the clothes. That's so cool. And I, I think that's so cool as well. Um, Oftentimes, uh, amigurumi patterns have clothes built into the doll, so I love it when the designer makes it such that uh, the clothes are removable. I think it's fun, and I think it's more interactive um, for the, the owner to be able to dress and undress and switch out clothing for the dolls. I think that's super fun to do. For Inez's hair, I started off um, sewing down her bangs. I started off with this strand, but when I did that, I found that the definition of the hair kind of got lost and it started looking sort of matted down. And I will try to insert uh, before and after pictures here on the screen somewhere so that you can see what I'm talking about. But um, I didn't like that, so I ended up removing the uh, stitches and I ended up gluing down her bang strands here just to keep the definition. It has a little bit more of a puffy definition um, as opposed to a flat definition when I started to sew it. So I just wanted to point that out there. Um, the way that I sewed it uh, made it look that way. Um, if you have a different method of sewing your hair strands down, you may not um, you may not encounter the same issues that I had, but the way that I sew mine down, that's what came down to. And so I decided to just go with glue instead. I did end up sewing down the hair cap, the hair wig cap portion, but for the bangs, it's uh, glued down. My next wig, I just happened to... I got an itch because I'm so in love with a crochet confetti's patterns that I decided to start up a new whip just last night. Like we're talking 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> and I went through her Instagram account and um, stalked her for another one of her free patterns. And I chose the frog. And this is what it's looking like so far. So I'll, this is all I have. I just have the body. I'm in the process of stuffing it, and I uh, crocheted the arms into the body. And I love that in her pattern, she does include um, crocheting the, the arms into the body. And then I'm going to do the head, and there's like a little hood, and then the eyes. So 
I'm looking forward to finishing this. Like I said, I want a whole crochet confetti army <laughs> in my uh, in my personal collection and studio, craft studio. So this is what I got so far. If you look at the pattern, it's so super cute. And when you see it, you may just fall in love yourself. That's all I have for you in this episode. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for subscribing, liking, and sharing our videos. Uh, we appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for all of your love and your support. And um, we hope to see you in our next video. And hopefully Nico will join us then. See ya. Bye.